At the very beginning of class, we were using the particle model, basically drawing a dot to represent an object. And we would draw the dot to different places to represent that the object has moved. Here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the particle model again and just draw a dot. And that dot could represent whatever object you're going to be studying. In this case, how about we let it be me? But instead of drawing it at different positions to represent displacements, what we're gonna do is draw arrows on it to represent the forces acting on that object. Really what we're gonna be doing is force diagrams for an object, but we call those free body diagrams. Look, there's me and you freed it of a body. Now I'm just a little ghost. So let's imagine what forces are acting on me. And so you can imagine this being my center of mass or my gut. I feel the earth pulling me down and we call that weight. And right net, and if that was the only force acting on me, I would be free falling, but I'm not free falling. I'm being supported. I'm being supported by the chair acting on me. Since the chair is supporting me, I'm going to call that the normal force. And I'll label these with the objects that are causing the forces. So for the normal force, it's the chair acting on me. And also uh, for the weight, it's the earth acting on me. When you draw a free body diagram, it's only for one object, me. And so all of these forces should be some other object acting on me. These are not a Newton's third law pair. Like the Newton's third law pair for this one has to be acting on the other object would be me pushing down on the chair. There's a couple more things that we should do just to be formal and complete. One is to assign a coordinate system. Your textbook likes to have you draw it right on top of the object so that the object is at your origin. You don't have to, you can note it off to the side, but let's just do what your book is doing right now. So how about we call that the plus X direction? And we can call that the plus y direction. It would have been fine also if you had just drawn a little one over here, just saying plus x and plus y. Your object doesn't have to be drawn at the origin. And if you know that your net force is up or down or left or right or zero, we should take a second to note that here as well. Now for my example right now, I'm just sitting in my room. I'm not falling. I'm not changing my speed at all you know, relative to the surface of the earth. So I'm gonna say that my net force is zero. I'm at rest and I'm staying at rest. F net is equal to zero Newtons. And that's our first free body diagram, our first force diagram. How about we do another one? How about a frog in the process of jumping upwards off the table? Oh, we draw a dot for the frog. And I'm gonna take a second and go through that list of forces. And I'm gonna start at the bottom because I like to leave this general force uh, to last. Uh, is there any thrust force acting on the frog? No. Is there any drag acting on the frog? Like, is he moving through the air fast enough for it to matter? No. Any kinetic friction on the frog? No. Is there any static friction on the frog? Maybe. I'm like, I could jump up off of ice. I don't really need static friction to jump upwards as long as I'm really, really careful. Is there a normal force? a support from a solid object. Yes, the floor or the table. So we're gonna have a normal force. Is there a tension from any ropes or strings? No. Are there any springs involved? No. Weight from the earth? Yes, the earth is pulling down on the frog. And then a general force, basically any other pushes or pulls that haven't already been listed in here. No. All right, so we have a normal force and a weight force. So let's draw those on the frog. So of the weight force acting down. And I drew a bit shorter than before because the frog has less mass. So the frog will have less weight. And you just draw longer arrows to represent stronger forces. The normal force is gonna be perpendicular to the surface. The surface is gonna be horizontal. The table is presumed horizontal. So the normal force on the frog will be upwards. The table is supporting the frog upwards. So we draw an arrow up. 
Now if I draw these two arrows equal in length, it's going to imply the net force on the frog is zero, which means the acceleration is zero. So that can't be the frog jumping. That would be the frog sitting on the table. If we want the frog to be in the process of a jump, it has to be pressing down harder on the table. And that means also that the table presses up harder on the frog, making this force bigger than the weight. Now there is a net unbalanced force acting on the frog, so it can accelerate upwards. Let's take care of our last two steps, give it a coordinate system, plus x, plus y, and sketch our F net. The net force is upwards. Box accelerating in the back of the truck, and not slipping. Let's draw the free body diagram of the box. And I'm going to imagine the truck is accelerating to the right, the box is accelerating to the right. Earth is pulling down on the box. The truck is supporting the box from falling, so there is a normal force. Now, the box is only going to be accelerating rightwards because of the friction. Now, if the box was slipping, we would say kinetic friction, but I specifically said not slipping, so this is going to be static friction. Let's pick a coordinate system. Plus y is upwards, plus x is to the right, and draw our net force. If the normal force and weight were not equal, the box would have some acceleration up or down. It would be bouncing up out of the truck bed or crushing in through the truck bed. So if we just want the box to ride on the truck bed, these two have to balance. So that way there's no vertical net force then the net force, the only one left on balanced, is this one. So then let's sketch that one out rightwards, which also means then that the acceleration would be rightwards. How about wood block sliding down wood ramp? And remember now that you know about static friction and kinetic friction. So I'm going to sketch the ramp here and draw the wood block as an object. Now Earth's gravity with the weight of the object is always going to point vertically down. The normal force has to be perpendicular to the surface and the surface is here. So the block feels a supporting force here from the ramp. If you wanted to sketch out that this thing is sliding and is moving down the ramp, not on the object, because this is our force diagram, but maybe off to the side, we could leave a little arrow for the velocity. And then let's add an arrow for friction. And friction has to be parallel to the surface. It is sliding, so it is kinetic friction. Now this wood block could be sliding down the ramp and speeding up. Or it could be sliding down the ramp and slowing down, like what if somebody had pushed it down the ramp, but then kinetic friction is going to slow it down and restick it to the ramp. We don't really know yet. How about I go back and I add that in, and let's say that it is speeding up. If it's going to speed up, that means that the acceleration is in the direction of the velocity. If the acceleration is down the ramp, it means the net force is down the ramp. Now let's get in a good habit for dealing with Newton's second law and more complicated free body diagrams. I'm going to suggest you align your coordinate system to match the acceleration. 
and that will also make your acceleration positive. So if my acceleration is down the ramp, I don't want my coordinate system to be the default. I want to rotate that coordinate system so that way my plus x can align with my acceleration so that way my acceleration is positive. Plus x, which means the plus y is here. So let's call that good for free body diagrams. So the last section in the chapter is Newton's third law. I covered that in the first video, but here it is in section seven for you to look over yourself.